Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very accomplished professional from Colorado, USA, Dr. Teresa Larson. Teresa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ash. Uh, I'm Dr. excited Lars- to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Larson is the founder of Movement Rx, and she has been recognized and felicitated several times. So, Teresa, before we start talking about health, tell me about your journey and the work you're doing at Movement Rx. Yes. So, well, it's quite the journey, mm-hmm. with it, which is full of pivots, which mm-hmm. anybody that runs their own business out there probably can understand that. If you're going to last in business, you have to pivot sometimes, mm-hmm. right? And be okay to change. Um, so I was just a little bit about my background. I I uh, was a Marine Corps officer first, uh, served as an engineer officer in the Marines and did not want to do engineering after I got out mm-hmm. because it just wasn't for me. Uh, so I played a year of professional softball actually in Italy. Mm-hmm. Wow! I do love that we're on like completely different sides of the world right now. Mm-hmm. This is very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I played a year of professional softball and then realized I need to find a, a, a vocation, a career for myself. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to be engineering. It wasn't the military anymore. Um, I did really appreciate health and well-being, but I wanted to understand it to a greater level. So going in the medical industry seemed like a good fit. Mm-hmm. Some sort. So I found, I got my doctorate in PT mm-hmm. and Pretty soon after getting my doctorate, I decided to start my own business because I just, I wanted to serve people the way they needed Mm. to be served. Uh, And so I ended up starting my own business and running clinics in San Diego. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were mobile clinics. So I'd come into the gym or one of my PTs would go in and we'd we'd serve the clientele that was there. Uh, But I also realized that wasn't how I, I, it was it was easy to burn out in that space because mm. you're constantly, you have to spend so much time and energy with one person mm. each hour. And while I love serving people, I was like, there's got to be a more effective way. And so I quickly pivoted to doing more corporate wellness. We actually sold our PT practice two years mm-hmm. ago because we mm. were growing it in San Diego, California, and moved to Colorado because we wanted mm. to live in the mountains. But with that move we also decided to really focus on leadership training in the well-being space Mm. so a a message that i had you know as a marine well something that happened while i was in the marines i really struggled with my health and Mm well-being and a lot of leaders do they put their family and work first and everyone assumes they're okay yeah right because there's employee well-being programs sure that very few people use and a lot of leaders don't necessarily like when I was a Marine officer, I'm not going to tell my colleagues, my mm. Marines, like what's going on with me. Right. Like I want to call, I, t- I want to talk to peers, but even mm. talking to peers mm. can be tough too. But I found that, you know, people assume we're always okay. And that's not the case. And there's not really any special offering for the leader. Mm. And so we decided to focus there. And that's what we do now is we have a whole well being platform built out for leaders. We do leadership trainings virtually mm-hmm. and in person. We run retreats and I do a lot of speaking. Wonderful. How wonderful. Yeah. And uh, tell me, Teresa, has your experience in the Marine Corps influenced your views on physical and mental health as a competitive advantage? Yes. So the I, I, to, I coined a lot of my trainings as your competitive advantage because mm-hmm. You know, I, as an athlete and as a, a military individual, like I love being competitive. Mm-hmm. And and I think that when people choose to focus on improving their performance, it's much more exciting than like mm-hmm. treating disease, right? So all the while, when you do, when you work on your competitive advantage, you are also helping prevent disease. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, the Marine Corps, what it did was instill in me the ability to get my hands dirty and not mm-hmm. quit. So I'm not afraid to get, you know, get down and dirty, learn the trade, not just expect someone else to do it for me mm-hmm. and create the discipline 
to see a mission to fruition versus mm. like wait, expecting someone else to do it. Fascinating. But what, you know, when I was reading and preparing for my conversation with you, um, I did understand how you, uh, you know, treat different things as, as a competitive advantage. But I wanted to understand your concept of health being a competitive advantage. Yes. So, I mean, if you think about it, like what, if you don't have, if you're in pain, how does that affect your productivity, mm -hmm. right? Or your attention to detail or your ability to be present. Most likely you're probably complaining to your family about your pain. Yeah. And maybe you're doing something about it. Maybe you're not. Or yeah. if you are diagnosed with some injury or disease, right? That affects your mindset. Mm -hmm. It affects your physical, like how you are physically. And so, but the thing is in your twenties, it may not make a big difference. It's not something really that's on your mind, but as you age 40s, 50s, 60s, right? Aging, an indication of aging is decreasing physical capacity. Right. And I see people who are in their 30s already much older because they're physically declined. They mm. physically decline so much. Um, they don't take care of themselves, right? They don't move enough. Mm. They, they're very sedentary. So, but, but the thing is you're, so your ability to lead effectively mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. energy and feel good does depend on your well-being. Right. If you want to grow and be effective, it does. And then also, if you want to last, mm -hmm. after you retire, do you want to have a heart attack? Correct. Or stroke, right? Like because you're so you've had so much stress mm -hmm. and you never learn how to deal with it. You just pushed it down, and then all of a sudden now you retire mm -hmm. and you don't know what to do. Right. Right. And your body's already kind of done hmm. and so not to I don't want to I'm not fear mongering people but I'm just saying like wherever you're at you can start now hmm. and the more active you are and the more physically strong you are hmm. the more likely is you'll have more energy increased function and hmm. last hmm. very interesting and uh, based on the work that you do with so many individuals what are some of the significant health challenges that you see in today's business leaders? Burnout is mm -hmm. a big one. Right. Yeah, I would say burnout is a big one. Uh, some people are dealing with pain. Low back pain is pretty common, but burnout and stress, mm -hmm. the things, the, but the thing is people, our society really focuses a lot on the symptoms of stress, like hypertension, high cholesterol, things like that. Mm. Um, and so you know, looking at upstream from that, it's like, well, how are you sleeping? Mm. How are you training your mind? Right. Right. Are you, do you have a physical practice that you do? A lot of people, that's the thing they don't, they wait until they're sick. Mm. It's a very common, that's a very common behavior mm. is you wait until you're sick to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, we got to look upstream at stress, mm. right? Like how are you sleeping? Are you sleeping seven hours at least a night? Are you meditating or in prayer? Are you um, moving enough, unplanned and planned? Mm -hmm. Are you eating well? Mm -hmm. right? How are you hanging out with and what are you paying attention to? All those things will in impact how you handle what's happening in your mm -hmm. life. right? And, and then burnout is more of a systemic aspect of stress. Mm -hmm. So that's like culture, culturally, um, there's, you know, maybe negativity or cynicism, or there's, um, the op tempo operational tempo is really mm. high, but like the amount of people to support that is mm. lower, you know, retention is lower. Mm. Um, maybe there's lack of reward system, right. Or they, they don't really have a handle on how to take care of their people or make them feel right. There's usually a dis like I've seen there's, it can be a disconnect between the leadership and the employees. Mm. Like the leaders are like, oh, I don't really, you know, they've got to focus on their job mm. and they just throw well-being programs or throw events at their people. Mm. But there's like, it's almost like a caste system, mm -hmm. right? And they're not connecting. Mm. And you see that more in bigger companies. Mm. But tell me, so, uh, you know, I've also often been asked this question. That, you know, when businesses want to support employees uh, in their health or their wellness, 
how do they manage the fine line between intruding into personal space and ensuring personal wellness? So, well, first of all, it's the it's the leader's responsibility mm -hmm. to set the example mm -hmm. and to take care of themselves and their people. But it's also their people's responsibility to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So you don't, what you can do, the best way to do it is make sure that you're vocal about the practices you do mm. and what's important to you, right? Just like with a company mission statement, right? What is your mission? What is your vision? Is everyone on board with that? Okay, well, part of that vision should be like some of the best leaders I've worked with are like, my, I, I want you to take care of yourselves. I, I demand that you do it. Mm. I'm giving you the opportunity. It is important to me. I want it to be important to you. And they're providing the best resources mm -hmm. for their people. They're not necessarily digging into their personal problems, but they're providing resources that kind of cover the gamut. And I've found that um, sometimes we come into a company and do a training that helps spark the conversation with people about, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I needed this. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation I have with them. And so the leader providing them resources like people like me and my team mm. gives them a chance to not only give gift their employees opportunities to get better, but then they don't have to be part of the ins and outs of what's going on right. with the employee. Right. They just have to provide the resources and support. It's like mm. when I was in the Marines, it wasn't the fact that I was a like a good engineer. You know, I I that's my that was my trade and I could do I was good at managing people, but what I was good at was also finding resources and the proper training for the people. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and then you don't have to get into the issues of, you know, it's not your job to be the psychologist or the PT mm -hmm. or the doctor. It's your job to provide the resources and it's the individual's job mm -hmm. to take ownership of those resources. And Teresa, tell me how important is health and well being? for employee retention and satisfaction? Well, it's very important, actually. Mm -hmm. um, if someone doesn't... So first of all, people have to believe in the mission and vision, mm -hmm. right? And, and really have to believe in it. Um, that's first and foremost. And then the second one is they have to feel cared for. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stay in a company they don't care for. Now... Some people may, right? But their health and well-being will be impacted. Like I know people who work for a Fortune, some of the Fortune two company, mm -hmm. Fortune three company, mm -hmm. and they don't really feel cared for. But they're making money to support their family. Mm -hmm. But imagine, but the but the cost of what that is on their psyche mm -hmm. and body is not good, right? So yes, making money for your family is really important but mm -hmm. at the end of the day if it comes at a cost of your psyche and your well-being then it's not worth it mm -hmm. or you have to find fulfillment and you have to find that um sense of you matter elsewhere mm -hmm. right in other parts of your life like one believing in yourself but also find other groups that can support mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. but it's really nice you spend so much time at work that you know people need to feel cared for and in order to, and, and a great way to be feel cared for is taking mm. care of their well-being mm. and not just throwing spaghetti at a wall but saying what do you all need and then here here's resources i want to provide you mm. and like actually in person engaging resources mm. we need more human connection we don't need more virtual opportunities right, right. but it is so there there is some research around um uh, like a company culture that has more connection and gratitude involved mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. um, is a company that will make more money in the end. Mm -hmm. right? I know a very, very accomplished company that focuses on the internal strength mm -hmm. of, of the people. Um, the internal strength needs to be stronger than the external growth. Mm -hmm. Right. So they are growing fast, but they're also very conscious of their people and how they're growing. Mm. And they need to make sure that that is stronger than their growth. Mm. Because if it's not, then you deal with the burnout mm. and the stress. Fascinating. My next question is that what role does resilience play in linking health with professional success? 
Um, well, so resilience, resilience is in the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it comes from the individual and, and um, it's a way, it's overcoming adversity. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've seen, you know, good company cultures, not so great company cultures and very resilient people in both. Mm. Now, resilient people um, tend to gravitate towards people who build them up mm. and who are positive. They tend to look for the ways to solve a problem versus complain mm. about the problem. Mm. Now, in companies where there's high burnout, it's like you, those resilient people you see trying to find a solution. Mm. But it does play a crucial role in a company lasting, mm -hmm. right? If you look at my company, we pivoted multiple times um and i mean going on a pt building pt practices mm. is lucrative to a degree but time mm. is always money right time right. is you're trading time for money all mm. the time um and it wasn't where i wanted to go mm. so i had to over you know deal with the adversity of like okay i'm gonna kind of go back to zero making no money to figure out what I want to do next and how I'm going to make this pivot mm. and who do I need to talk to. But I didn't want to give up mm. because it mattered. And so I had to find resources and champions and figure it out. And that's what res resilient people do. And you want resilient people on your team. And I didn't have that initially, right? Right when I was running my PT practice, I didn't have resilient mm. people on my team. Mm. But then, but, but that was also a reflection of me, mm. the leader. Mm. which is which is actually a part of resilience facing your own strengths and weaknesses mm. um i know i'm a resilient person but i wasn't really great at hiring people mm. or growing a business especially a business i didn't want to be in you know um but i realized like okay the resilient part of me was like i messed up mm -hmm. i don't know what i'm doing i definitely don't want to be doing this mm. i need to find a solution Mm. So I figured it out. I found the right people. And that's what resilient people do. And you want those kind of people on your team. Those people mm. will help you grow. Those people will take, you know, those people will look at the initiatives that you're throwing at them or giving them mm. and they'll run with it. Um, but being able to overcome adversity is this, is something that people can develop over time. Mm. I don't think you're just born with it. I know you can be, you can develop it, but mm. It does, as the leader, you can set the stage for that. Like the people that you're around, mm -hmm. the things that you do um, to train your mind, to train your body, like well-being has a lot to do with resilience. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. an example would be the holidays, right? The holidays mm -hmm. aren't easy for everyone. Sometimes they're not easy for me. I've lost both my parents. Mm -hmm. um, I have two little kids and sometimes I really miss them. I, the, however, because I train my mind and meditate and because I am, you know, I, 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 my mental health is impacted by how physical I am. I love to do physical fitness. It does impact your mental health because of the people I connect with. It helps me through, mm. right. Some of those hard times mm. versus wallowing in sorrow, not leaning on the tools, mm. Right. So that that is what also resilient people do is they lean on the tools that help them. Correct. Well said. But, you know, I've also often spoken to many people. And, in you know, 30 years ago, when I was traveling 20 days a month, I used to say the same thing. I don't have time to look after my health. And uh, even if I do get the time, don't tell me what what is wrong with me. I don't want to know. And yes. I still hear young people say that. My mm -hmm. question to you is what strategies do you recommend for busy professionals to maintain their health? Yeah, so that that your schedule, and I've worked with many individuals who travel a ton. Yeah. Um, and you know, the one of there is a big excuse of I don't have time, right? Or another one is I don't feel like it. Um, but I'm like, okay, look you either make time. So you have to choose your hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. You choose the hard of not doing anything now, mm -hmm. but then the hard is you're going to most likely have some kind of systemic disease as you age. Yeah. It's just, that's just the reality. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not, but like 
the reality is as you age, mm -hmm. if you haven't taken care of yourself, th there will be problems. Absolutely. Or you could choose the hard of taking care of yourself now mm -hmm. and doing one thing a day. Yeah. Right. Even if it's getting up early to meditate or making sure you get sleep or right. I always challenge leaders to do one thing a day. Then that's hard too, because you're mm. succumbing, you're, you're saying no to, I don't have time, mm. right? You're, you have to find the time, right? You have to build it into your schedule, mm. but that hard right now is going to reap huge benefits as you age Very well said. and also how you feel, mm. right? Like people who I ask them like 20 traveling 20 days a month, or, mm. you know, I travel usually twice a month, sometimes more, and that's enough mm. for me. Because I know it will impact my health. And I'm pretty good on the road planning what I eat and what I do. But I'm just like, how how do you feel traveling like that? Do you want to do that? Mm. You know, when people actually take the time to think about how they live their life, I guarantee tra if you have a family, especially if you're traveling 20 days a month, it's not fun, mm. right? Or it, 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 it's hard, mm. right? It's hard on the family. Correct. And how... When you when you take a time when you take time to pause and think, how do I actually want to live my life? Mm. Um, then you can start to make shifts, and maybe the person you're working for will be receptive. Maybe they won't, but if they're not, then you got to find something new. Absolutely. I That's... was speaking to a guy that I have been speaking to. Um, he was a co-founder of the Waves app and a couple other mm -hmm. uh, social media type widgets and very successful individual, but like mm. ended up um, successful in business. Mm. Right. But he also had succumbed to the excuse of, I don't have time. Right. And my family and work come before everything else. Mm. And I think he was at a concert one day and it was like, he was starting a new venture, um, you know, and it was looking pretty positive. It was a startup um, millions of dollars at stake. And he was at a concert and he's like, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm. Like I, I'm not healthy. Just lost my wife. You know, we, um, I thought we were doing well. We're not. And I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And so he stopped. Mm. And, you know, at the, by the point I, I met him, he mm. been remarried and had a child and, you know, is kind of more doing executive coaching now, which gives him the freedom. Mm but you kind of have to ask yourself, like, what's the cost Correct. of how you're living? Like, how much money do you need? Mm. What kind of life do you want? Mm. And if you want to be gone that much and be stressed or, you know, not taking care of yourself, fine, continue that way. Mm. But I'm just going to tell you that hard is going to catch up to you later. Very well said. Very well said. So today I've got time for one more question. And uh, this is you know, for many, many people who will listen to us, how do you see the future of health and well-being evolving in the corporate world, given the future of work seems to be moving towards hybrid working, all of us spending more time at home, getting you know, a little more flexible hours, not working 60-hour weeks, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Well, it's working hybrid is a catch-22 because you can find yourself working more right. and sometimes you'll have leaders who will mm. feel like they can respond to you all hours of the day. Mm. Right. So boundaries are going to be a big, really important thing mm. as we move as, as I mean, we're in a hybrid work workforce right now. Um, well, I, I do believe that movement RX and what we're doing is very much pioneering the well-being space. Cause there is a ton of well-being offerings for people. Mm. I mean, there's, a wonderful show on blue zone and there's um lots of different opportunities like resources out there for health and well-being mm. yet a lot of them are virtual right or something you have to view um or for just people like the employees mm -hmm. but if we're going to make any changes political leaders right. leaders of companies leaders of families if we're going to change the climate of mass tragedies that happen from mm. gun shooting um company cultures right wreaking havoc on people's well-being mm. like mm. um political leaders not getting along we have to focus on leadership well-being mm. 
So right. I have a very big look at this. Like I, I'm focusing on companies now, but as I grow um, and build my platform, it's going to expand. I, I know the people in my co- in the companies I work with are fathers and mothers, right? Eventually, it'll be political leaders, right? right? That's I'm starting in that arena now too. It's like that's how we're going to make a change, mm. right? The parents take the ownership of their health, so they can set the example for their children. Mm. We need that. Yeah, we need yeah. more connection. We don't need more virtual offerings. Mm. <laughs> What a great response. Thank you. And on that note, Riza, and I just want to say thank you so much for speaking to me about your own amazing journey. I think I love the way you have pivoted not once, but several times. And, you know, you seem to have, as the Japanese say, found your ikigai uh, yeah. in the wellness space. Uh, thank, you. thank you for speaking to me for so many different aspects of wellness, of well-being, And I think I picked up many new points from you today. Thank you again for speaking Uh, to me and good. Well, thank you, Ash. I appreciate it. And I really love that we're talking halfway across the world. Absolutely. Early. I think it's late your time, but early mine. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.